Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Run to your seat, it's okay. Wonderful to be with you this morning. Welcome to Kaiser Christian Church for our time of worship together. Welcome to all of you joining us from home or wherever you find yourself this morning. Let's begin our time of worship together with some music. Stand and join with me in the call to worship. Love one another, even when love involves risk. The love of God loves us. Love and care for others, even when caring is hard. The love and care of God loves and cares for us. Love in truth and in action. By this we are known as children of God. Will you pray with me? Shepherd of love, guide our thoughts and actions so that we too might become shepherds of love. Speak to our hearts as we listen this day that our hearts may expand and embrace all of your sheep. Love us fully, that we might love all of the flocks of your world as fully as we are loved by you. In your shepherding love, we pray. Amen. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham, oh, rock of my soul. 
so high can't get over it so low can't get under it so wide can't get round it must go in at the door rockin my soul in the bosom of abraham rockin my soul in the bosom of abraham rockin my soul in the bosom of abraham oh rockin my soul so high can't get over it so low can't get under it so wide can't get round it must go in at the door rockin my soul in the bosom of abraham rockin my soul in the bosom of abraham rockin my soul in the bosom of abraham oh rockin my soul Amen. come the time in our worship together where we bring all of our anxieties and our concerns, our blessings, our thanksgivings together, the contemplation of our weeks into this space. We do our best to release them, to confess them, to let them go. That, that word confession is sometimes one we struggle with isn't it? Or we are invited by God to release those things that have been weighing on our hearts or that we've been contemplating that God has put on us to ponder and to think about, to grow with. Sometimes we do that individually between, directly between us and God. Sometimes we're called to do that in uh, wider and wider forms, usually making us less and less comfortable. True? Uh, and sometimes we are invited to do that with our church families. And uh, with that in mind, this morning we have one of us who has been feeling that call on their heart to, to do some confessing. And so I invite Carol to come to the pulpit this morning and in the context of our prayer time with God um, to share a little with us. Good morning. Oops. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, for bothering you all. <laughs> Actually, I'm not really. <laughs> but I'm glad to be here and for you guys to take a minute of my time. I have to read this because if I don't, I'll ramble. <laughs> <clears throat> I have praying about this Black Lives Matter because I was told I was a racist because I said all lives matter. God has shown me in many ways I am not a racist. I have been guilty of not recognizing how much of a struggle other races go through to be here. Even when they were here with us to make America, America, they were hidden. Most of my schooling was biased towards whites being dominant in the success. Now they are teaching people how instrumental the black community has provided to our growth. I'm glad about that. I'm glad I asked God to show me the truth. Sometimes you have to have things pointed out to you before you can change how you look at things. To conclude, black lives matter. Maybe this will cause people to look inside themselves and decide who really matters. God does. Seek him first and watch for the answer that he gives you. Thank you all for your time. God bless all of you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carol, for, for your vulnerability and sharing with us what God has put on your heart uh, this morning. Let's continue in like manner of prayer and lifting up what is on each of our hearts as we pray together this morning. Holy and loving God, God who leads us, who makes us lie down, who makes us get up and say what is on our hearts, even when that is sometimes scary or daunting. 
continue to give us courage in the faith and in ourselves and what you call us to do each and every day, to love one another as you love us. Help us to release our thanksgivings alongside our anxieties and our concerns, all of these things to you. Thanksgiving for the things that you bless us with, the love and courage in one another, for the world that you have given us to steward. We lift up those that are in our hearts this morning people who we know are struggling, seeking healing and comfort. We pray your healing touch upon each of them, that they might each know that they belong to the family of God, that you are with them. You surround them with your Holy Spirit, the great cloud of witnesses of which we are each a part. Help us each to see the path that you have for us in doing that holy work of presence. Help us each to know that we are part of your grand plan of redemption, of healing the world. Lord, give us courage. Give us resolve. And when we feel that it is failing us, remind us that we can come to you. We can come together in the context of worship and be renewed and refilled with the power of your Holy Spirit. All of this made possible by the coming of your Son into our very midst, showing us the way, showing us what love is what grace is, that we are in fact capable of both. Let us continue in our worship this morning, praying together the way that your son Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying together, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our as we forgive our brothers. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining through the darkness, I will follow you. Sure, 
I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining through the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. Join me now in extending a blessing as we do each Sunday morning on our young ones in our community. Gracious God, we once again gather in worship of you. We gather remembering these young ones who you have blessed us with as family, as community. We ask your divine blessing upon each of them, that they might feel your presence surrounding them every single day, that they might recognize you leading them, comforting them, anointing them, calling them to a life of love. Amen. Lord is my shepherd, shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my 
whole life long. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Current diagnoses and prescriptions tell us that on any given day, about 25% of us are struggling with situational, seasonal, or chronic depression. 25%. Now, I would venture to guess that that is a conservative estimate given current times. And that doesn't even include those who struggle in silence, undiagnosed. It is described by or medical community as an epidemic of grand proportions. Suicide rates among young people have quadrupled in the last few decades. Today there are a lot of anxious and painfully sad people in our society, and in our church. Daily, walking through what seems to be a long valley of shadows. This includes people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all socioeconomic statuses, all races, ethnicities, career paths, doctors, nurses, teachers, contractors, mail carriers, office workers, all the service workers you can imagine, politicians, voters, even pastors. To quote something I was reading on this subject this week, and I think we all need to hear. I said, friends, you are not alone. We're in this together. You belong. The big question for us in response to this epidemic only one of which we find ourselves in the midst of. How do we help one another and not just dissolve into another clanging voice amidst the din of get bitter quick slogans and sales pitches to be happy? We Remember the words of this iconic psalm. This psalm used to comfort. The psalm we read when we are grieving. Used to give hope and solace. To remind us who God is. Psalm 23 begins with a powerful metaphor. Lord is my shepherd. A common enough image for God in the early Israelite history. Now, when the metaphor is used theologically, that's serious business. Because when that happens, like it does in this psalm, that metaphor becomes the way that we understand and know God. As shepherd, 
the use of that metaphor in this psalm reaches far beyond these words. It permeates not only the culture within our church and our faith, but even beyond that. Theological metaphor is powerful. This whole psalm itself is a metaphorical poem. A poem of faith that resonates with all of us. It's one of the most immediate recognizable pieces of scripture in the entire canon of not just Christian scripture, but all scripture. Resonate with it. Not because we all hear the same words, but because in hearing these same poetic words of faith and truth of God, we're all able to engage somehow in individual imaginative interpretation. The power of the theological metaphor. The psalm speaks to each of us in powerful ways because we will each come up with different answers when we ask the question, what does it mean to not want? What does it mean to lie down in green pastures? What images do these phrases evoke for each of us? What does it mean to be led beside still waters? What does it mean to have your soul restored? To walk through a dark valley? To not fear. What does it mean to be comforted, to be anointed, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever? We hear the words and they, they evoke images in each of our minds of our experiences with God and with one another. Sometimes if we are close enough with another person, some of those images may be shared, but for the most part, we each engage in that imaginative interpretation uniquely. The phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, speaks to us. All different, unique reflections of faith. Now, back to that big question that we seek an answer to. With, with all the anxiety and the turmoil in the world, how can we be used by God to offer some of this same comfort that this beautiful poem of faith describes? How can we be used by God to offer this comfort to one another. Now looking closely at all the metaphoric poetry of Psalm 23, we find some clue to the answer to that big question. The main one being that we never read the phrase, God said. Lack the idea of God speaking. The psalmist never says, God tells me, God spoke, God says. Now we have many other passages in Scripture where God is described as speaking wisdom, but here in this psalm that is used so often comfort, to uplift, to give and inspire hope. God is not described as speaking one single word. 
Nowhere in the psalm is God described as speaking to the psalmist or the people hearing these words, including us. Again, yes, God definitely speaks to us. But in this description of solace and a God who loves us, there is no indication of words used to achieve God's purpose. God communicates our worth and sense of belonging by showing up, being present with us. Psalm says it himself in the middle in verse 4, For you are with me. And us as, as human beings, as people of faith, as those desiring to bring that same love and comfort and grace and well-being to our fellow people, when faced with another's anxiety, pain or grief or depression, we automatically search for the right thing to say. No way. You need to have something to say, either to comfort or to quell the anxiety of another, and oftentimes to comfort and quell the anxiety that, that we are feeling because of another's pain, or depression, grief. We want the right words. Make that pain or anxiety or grief or depression go away. We wish there was a magic spell we could say sometimes, don't we? We just want the words, whether to encourage and lift up or just to get them sometimes to snap out of it because it makes us uncomfortable. We have all of that in us. We have the desire to comfort and our own discomfort with another part. The result is the same, whatever our drive us, that we seek those right words. And often it's not words that are needed. Again, I'll, I'll share a thought from you from one of my readings this week. said this, said, sometimes telling people what to believe or how to believe, although well-intentioned, is misplaced, misguided. And the best teaching, the most important words, are those that we leave unspoken. This psalm is, again, one of the most recognizable pieces of Scripture because it touches that deep part of our souls beyond the power of mere words, where those images, often unique to each of us, that are evoked By these, those images are, and our own experiences evoked by these words, experiences with God, remind us who we are, and that we belong to the family of God. It's a strong reminder of those things. It also gives us a template of, and for how we can share that sense of belonging with others by showing up. Uh, 
by not always having to have the right words to say. But being willing to be present with people in the good times and bad times. When they are struggling and need a reminder that they are not alone. That we are in this together. I often meet people whose need for professional help exceeds my expertise and knowledge, my capacity to, to help. And that happens to a lot of pastors. People come, sometimes known or unknown, into the church and they're, they're looking for, for help. They have anxiety. They're struggling with something. Diagnosed or clinical or, or otherwise. And part of a pastor's training is usually to, to recognize those times and to know when to refer. People that need a physician or a counselor or clinical treatment for addiction, these types of things. Now, I am committed myself to referring them to the professional help that they need, not because I don't believe God can heal them, but because I believe God uses many methods to heal, including medical and mental health professionals and our sciences. I'm also committed to staying connected with those people when I can, when they are willing to maintain that relationship. Because referring someone doesn't necessarily absolve me of responsibility, of being present. God still calls me to be present with that person if possible, not, not to say the right things, to apply some magic words or formula to them that will, you know, will instantly make them better, or to be a cheerleader, but to be present to be supportive, connected, always telling them that they have a place in the community, that they belong, rarely using words to do so. This is what Psalm 23 can teach us. even as it continues to provide us with comfort and a reminder of presence and faithfulness of God in our lives. A God who is present and faithful more often than not without using words. Saying, But showing us the action and deed of God's self and using the people around us to bear witness to the truth. We belong. We belong to this earth. We belong to one another. We belong to God. Amen. We continue in worship this morning and hearing our hymn of response. How like a gentle spirit. Despite the pain 
So often, we come to worship eager to be nurtured, encouraged, and reassured. But we also recognize times when we hear the words of scripture and recognize the hard questions which challenge us. Like this text from 1 John 3, 16. We know, loved by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses to help? In this Easter tide, remember how our hearts nearly burst open with the glad news, Jesus, Christ, is risen. With that open heart, we know it's possible for us to respond with compassion when we see the needs in those around us. Many of us help out in our food bank. It's just one of the outreach effort in our local area which we could use a financial boost. As we receive our morning offering, may you dig deep in response to the need which is before us and provide your life giving gift. May you bow in prayer with me. Holy God, you opened your heart to the world by sending Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Thank you for this opportunity to claim our identity as followers of the one who laid down his life for us. Let us love, not just in word, but in truth and action. Receive these gifts as our acts of love to respond to the needs of sister and brother. In Jesus' name, amen. In the last few weeks about the ways that we are shown that we belong, the ways that we should respond in the ways that we behave and the journey of belief that we are each on, this pattern of renewal that God invites us each to and sometimes contrasts with how we have done it ourselves in the church, but reminded by God that we belong first and we learn how to behave as a result of that belonging and we exercise.
exercise and practice develop our belief in and among all of that. This week, looking at that sometimes considered classic psalm, the 23, that you hear so often at memorials and times where we struggle and need comforting reminder of God's presence with us, not using words, saying nothing, reminding us that we belong. This table is another of those places where Jesus, the Lord and the Shepherd, God's people, invites us to commune, to be renewed, to connect and reconnect with our Creator, with our Savior. The one who shows up for us, sacrifices for us, anoints us, blesses us. table is one of belonging, not because we have earned it or paid for it, but because we were invited. And we have the great honor and blessing of extending that invitation, being used by God to be present to one another, to those that we meet in the world as people of faith, telling them also the good news that they also belong. We belong to one another. We belong to the family of God. We belong around this table together. That is good news. Amen? Amen. Let us pray together. Lord, you died on the cross to take away our sins. Help us to go out into the world and demonstrate your love by loving others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In our preparation to do just that, to go out into the world, to be present, showing and giving the love of God that we have felt and received. We remember at this table Time so long ago when Jesus gathered with his first disciples, took a simple piece of bread, blessed it, but broke it, handed it out amongst them, giving it to them, saying to them, Take and eat, this is my body, broken for each of you. As often as you eat it, you remember me. In similar fashion, after they had eaten, he took the cup and after giving thanks for it, he poured it out for each of them, saying, Take, drink this cup of the new heaven and pour it out for forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink it, Remember me. Let us join now together with God and one another in holy communion. This very room, there's quite enough love for one like me. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy for one like me. And there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away any Enough love for all of us, 
and in this very room there's quite enough joy for all of us and there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away any gloom for jesus lord jesus enough love for all the world and in this very room there's quite enough joy for all the world and there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away any gloom for Jesus Lord Jesus is in this very room. Right, this all this. Yeah, we have. You know. Oh, thank you for reminding me. The, the community dinner drive through once again is happening. Community dinner is happening again this Wednesday is a uh, drive through uh, takeaway uh, Wednesday evening from 5 to 7, 5 to 7 o'clock p.m. at St. Edward's Catholic Church. So if you want to get a nice, lovingly prepared hot meal, plan to be there <laughs> uh, and get your takeaway meal and, and wave hello to those who volunteer their time and prepare that for our community. So again, Wednesday evening, 5 to 7, community dinner, St. Edward's Catholic Church. Drive up and take a look. With that wonderful reminder, let's stand and join together in saying our benediction. Go, now is the time to worship. Go, now is the time to give your heart. Go just as you are to worship. Go just as you are before your God. Go. People of God, go in peace.